Hello and welcome to the Politics Joe podcast. I'm Ed Campbell and I'm here, as always, with uh, Ava Santina. That was a good intro. Thank you. It's very professional. Yeah. You're welcome. Enjoyed that. Uh, wider British media for that. Mm. The audience will tell you that's not how it usually begins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is... I think this is quite a... We're about to do quite a strange episode. Mm. In that... We usually talk about the news. We're going to talk about GB News. That's just mental, isn't it? That, is, that in itself is not mental. We do that quite a lot. But we're talking about the news, but the news is about you. God, that's an awful... Yeah. Which, as a, it's, mm. it's, which I think there's lots of things to consider in that, as a journalist, you never want to be the thing people are talking about. And also, as like a friend, I just want to say I'm pretty gutted about this. Like, I think this is like a pretty horrific thing that we found ourselves in. And yeah, I think it's good. I was it, going to make a joke. I was going to say, is the friend in the room with us now? <laughs> as a, as a Which friend. Which is horrible. Yeah, I was, I was trying to be nice. And then, but anyway, um, yeah, how are you? I've been a lot better, actually. I've been a lot better. This yeah. is, the whole thing is making me feel quite itchy and mm. gross. Maybe we should just put the clip in. Yeah, for context, I don't, if you haven't seen this, this is um, on Dan Wooten tonight on GB News last night. Lawrence Fox and Dan Wooten had a conversation about Ava. We're past the watershed, so I can say this. Um, show me a single self-respecting man that would like to climb into bed with that woman ever. Ever. Who wasn't an incel. Who wasn't a cucked little incel. That little woman has been fed, spoon-fed oppression day after day after day after day, starting with the lie of the gender uh, uh, wage gap. And she sat there and I'm going like, if I met you in a bar and that was like sentence three, chances of me just walking away are just huge. We need powerful, strong, amazing women who make great points for themselves. We don't need these sort of feminist 4.0. They're pathetic and embarrassing. Who'd want to shag that? Oh, Lawrence. Well, look, she... <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to provide a, a, a touch of balance from her because she did actually respond to this earlier today saying that she regretted her comments, but she didn't apologise. Uh, yes, so, <laughs> so so there you go. Uh, and she's a very beautiful woman, Lawrence. Very beautiful woman. So that was gross. Yeah. Basically, which is the least you can say about that. I just feel I've been put into the middle of a furore and a story that I didn't ask to be put into mm. I mean for a long time that man has said some pretty despicable things about women I mean there's the comments about asking a fellow journalist uh, what colour knickers she's wearing or there's another commentator he asked well he put out a tweet being like oh god you wouldn't want to be her girlfriend or whatever I just think it speaks to a kind of wider power dynamic that is sort of falling away now but definitely used to be there in the last few years it's like an antiquated practice of not being able to properly challenge a woman on her words and so just going for her level of attractiveness mm -hmm. yeah the, or her shagability the, the implication is that your worth is determined by how attractive you are to any man mm. rather than your professional conduct your intelligence your opinions but you know i get that I think any woman who's on social media gets that all the time. Mm -hmm. Like there's always someone who's shouting at you how ugly you are or mm -hmm. how, you know, large you are or whatever. None of that bothers me at all. Like if anything, we laugh about that sort of stuff upstairs all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I will regularly read you out a pretty despicable comment and be like, oh, nice one, Barry. <laughs> um, but this just being on a national television program and what I don't like about it was that the comments were said, the presenter laughed about it there was an entire gallery of people watching it go out who did nothing in, in, from the viewer's perspective to stop it. And then we've now come to find out today that that was actually pre-agreed with producers that he was going to say that, mm -hmm. that he was going to talk about my looks in the context of this, this discussion. And that he also then joked with the presenter after the segment about how funny it all was. Yeah. So for context, that was... 
Lawrence Fox has tweeted a conversation he claims is with Dan Wooten of them both kind of laughing about the segment, um, which is because Dan Wooten has put out two apologies on Twitter. He's yeah. tried to get in contact with you multiple times. He called me multiple times throughout the night last night. And obviously I don't know him. So and I, I do know who gave him my number and it was a woman and I'm really disappointed in her. Mm. So I just am. I think that I should have been asked permission before that. I was getting calls up until one o'clock in the morning, voicemails. And then after that tweet from Lawrence Fox went out, proving that they would both had a good, good old laugh about all of it yep. before public opinion had showed itself on the situation he then called again i i don't want to hear from him mm -hmm. i it, this is actually nothing to do with me no this is this is this is a network problem this is a presenter guest gallery production issue that is nothing to do with me i just so happen to be the person they're talking about yeah but i'm not in the conversation i wasn't present for it no i didn't ask i wasn't given a comment, right to reply, anything, it's not to do with me. And that's what makes me feel most sick about it. I'm just a commodity in this story. Yeah. I'm just I'm just a vehicle for content. And that's the that's the bit that makes me feel most sick. Cuz I think you have very little agency in this entire totally thing. You 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 weren't a willing participant of this discussion. The way, way you were described on GB News, I think the bar said described you as a hard left commentator. Yeah. Which I would never describe you as you'd never describe yourself as that the whole the whole thing was incredibly demeaning and for Dan Wooten to, cl to claim he respects you is obviously bollocks mm -hmm. he doesn't respect you if he respected you this this segment would never have been approved I yeah my my person is not in that at all it's a mm. caricature yeah no absolutely it's, you've been yeah. you, you have been made out to be this feminazi mm. um Fem feminazi hard left person because the whole, the whole the kind of ludicrous thing is it's all stemmed from a dis discussion you had on politics live about men's mental health mm -hmm. should we should we have that clip or yeah. a, bit, a bit of that roll it but uh, mm. in the times this headline sunak rishi sunak urged to appoint minister for men suggested by a conservative mp new role would champion issues such as reducing male suicide mm. would that be something you'd be in favor of well what's interesting about that is the hostility it sometimes faces whenever it comes up i saw a program where there was like a feminist academic and a lib dem mp and they were so hostile to this idea and i thought if you if you flipped those things i.e that is the biggest cause of death for men under 50 is suicide men are less likely to go to the doctors you know men, men are less likely to make maintain friendships. If that was for women, we'd often look at, well, why is society making that happen? Whereas with men, the argument is often, why are they doing that to themselves? So hey. I, I, I'm not like totally wedded to the idea, but the hostility towards the idea, I find it, it instructive. Ava? I think that it feeds into the culture a little bit, this Minister for Men argument. Like, In my mind, I think there should be a Minister for Mental Health, which would be all encompassing. I mean, you've got something like 7 million children waiting for prescriptions for mental health at the moment. It's a crisis that's endemic throughout the country, not specific to men. And I think, you know, a lot of ministers kind of bandy this about to sort of... I'm sorry, but make an enemy out of women, I think. Not you, and I don't think your book well, I, I, I don't, is. No, but I, I, think don't, Sunak... I don't accept that. I don't think it is to make an enemy. If we looked at during COVID, men were more, literally more likely to die um, from COVID. And I don't really want to cast myself as, as a meninist or one of these guys from sure. the, the manosphere, because that's not who I am. But I do find it interesting that sometimes the arguments tend to throw it But back who was doing all on... the work during COVID? You know, a lot of the time, if you looked into people's households, it was the women who were taking on the laundry, the school, uh, the school care, all but, of but, that. But all as, I'm not disputing any of that. What I'm saying that there are specific specific issues that men face that might warrant specific attention. I mean, literally, the biggest killer of, of men under 50 is suicide. That is an arresting statistic. And if that doesn't warrant specific attention, mental health is an umbrella issue. I have to say that is also because women are unsuccessful. That is a lot of, that is, feeds into that statistic. But it, feel, it feels like, it just doesn't feel like you've got any space for this idea that men might have unique challenges that face them. And the problem is, even as I'm saying this, in my mind, it's like I've got out the violin mm. and I don't want to be, I don't want to be, I don't want to be this guy because that's part of the problem is because you're encouraged at one level is men need to talk about their problems more. And then the moment you do it, you're like, all right, but not 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 quite so often and not quite so loud. So so the, uh, like you say, the book is not the book is more light-hearted than that, but it certainly you know goes around these issues. So Jeff Norcott, the comedian who you're having that discussion with, he's he, he's he says that he's appalled by this absolute yeah, and also crash. just a bit of context to that. So what happened was 
he was asked his opinion. It came from a book that he'd written. I hadn't read the book. Mm -hmm. I was just asked if I agree there should be a minister for men. My point was, I think there should be a minister for mental health mm -hmm. in light of the high suicide rate for men, in light of the equally high suicide rate for women. I made a point that women are less successful at suicide, yeah. which is true. Because men, men choose more lethal yes. ways of killing themselves. And women hate women, women anyway. I don't want to go too yeah. deep into it, but that is, that is a point of fact. And I also pointed to the 7 million children who are on or awaiting prescriptions for their mental health or trying to seek therapy. I was saying that there should be an all-encompassing role in government for this, this, I would argue, pandemic of mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. The way that that has been construed by Dan Wooten and Lawrence Fox is that I'm sneering at male suicide, yeah. which I categorically am not doing. No. And if you'd like to look back on the catalogue of videos that we have made here on Joe, mm -hmm. a lot of those are to do with male suicide yep. and the issues and drug abuse and, you know, we, we've done it enough to like you know I've got enough behind me on my CV to say I was not sneering at male suicide mm -hmm. but that goes back to the caricature they're putting they're basically making this this character young blonde woman hates men sneers at male suicide is hard left now let's mock her for her appearance yeah. I don't I don't exist in this I'm no. a fabrication no you're as a representation of you rather than your actual self mm -hmm. and yeah i just i th i I, just, I think this whole episode is actually quite frightening as in i think mm. it's you've been made into this caricature for the right for probably some quite far right people yeah you're now a villain to them well, you're i think it's incredibly irresponsible you're inciting anger out Hatred. of your viewers yeah. and and then, you know, that's fine. You're going to get the clicks out of it today. But then where does that leave me tomorrow? Where's the duty of care for that? You've mm -hmm. put my name, my picture um, up on your national television program. Yep. Where does that leave me tomorrow? We know that people who sit at home and watch these things sometimes can't appreciate the context of trying to get clicks. And they're actually really angry mm -hmm. about it. You've misrepresented me, and now where are you going to be if someone turns up at my house tomorrow? Yeah, and and it's actually and, and let's not forget someone was recently convicted of mm -hmm. of, 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 of th due to threats they made to you and your family. Yeah. Wait, so this is this is I think people talk about um, people talk about the way people talk about things, and as if it's quite as as if it doesn't actually have any resonance in real life. But someone someone was making credible threats to you and your family and I think this could fan, fan flames mm. further. It's I think it's, it's an incredibly stupid irresponsible harmful thing that GB News has done and I I don't I don't see it, it was also I think it's complete and utter shit that GB News is going to apologise to you at some point today. Well, which, isn't that like, like, crazy how, sorry how, that they... How? Yeah, they're crazy that they put out a statement saying, we'll be first, first I wasn't even in the original statement. Yep. We'll, we'll contact the individual involved. I'm not involved in this. I'm not, I'm nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. Second statement they gave, we'll be shortly in contact with Miss Evans. Sorry? By, by what mechanism? Yeah. It's, and, and to put out a statement like that without even trying to make contact with me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also other presenters on the channel who are condemning it they know this is what gb news is mm. gb news regardless of the program that you make you could be the mild-mannered morning show host you know full well you're lying you're in bed with conspiracy theorists a uh, misogynists etc who are making it's it, they're fucking around and finding out this is what this is this is the level of discourse that GB News is. I've been contacted by a lot of people this morning and one of them was um a female exec who left and she said it had gone round her group of female execs who used to work at GB News as this is the reason why we left. Now you've got other other journalists I'm not going to name anyone but a lot of quite a few presenters and journalists have reached out to me and producers to condemn it. I don't see a way out of this apart from 
expunging Lawrence Fox from the channel. And if they don't, I'm not trying to... Do you know what? I don't want to frame it in the way that I'm giving them an ultimatum because I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I do think it does raise questions for the government and raises questions for the Conservative Party because I don't think... I, I don't see how they should be comfortable with having Jacob Rees-Mogg, Lee Anderson, Esther McVeigh, yep. sitting elected members of parliament on that channel alongside someone who genuinely cannot see women apart from through the lens of, am I going to have sex with them or not? Yep. And it's also not the first time that GB News has left a lot to be desired in maybe the most mild fucking terms possible in its coverage. It's you platformed Mark Stein, Mark Stein for however long. Um, platforms COVID denial. Um, they had that bullshit when Esther McVeigh and Phil Davis, Phil Davis, Philip Davis, uh, were interviewing Jeremy Hunt. Mm. Stuff like this. It's this is the, just kind of the the latest in a litany of embarrassments and professional failures and journalistic failures that GB but News is representing. But it is journalistic failure because as Fox has now proven, he did tell the producer what he was going to say. Yeah. And that will say then goes to, on the scripts, those are overseen by an editor. There's a lot of people involved in this and to sort of cry foul now and say, oh, I didn't know and it was an accident and the broadcast got away from me, which is what Wooten has claimed to me in a voicemail. That's wrong. It's just, it's, totally wrong. it's just an outright it's, well Fox has proved it's an outright lie um, there was one thing else I wanted to say and I can't think what it was oh yeah I just wanted to say that if they are more than welcome to debate what I said on Politics Live yep. they are more than welcome to play the clip and dissect it and challenge what I said in there no problem at all love a debate I am regularly asked to go yeah. and debate issues but what I don't understand is how it then moves on to someone's body and it moves into that carnal sphere that's the bit I don't understand yeah and it's just wildly inappropriate yeah imagine like you know talking about anyone like that regardless of the context no it's it's it's, it's intended to be degrading and humiliating which is Vile. Mm -hmm. We'll have a more cheerful episode for you next time. Yeah, is there anything else you want to add? About no, it? no, I'm golden. Thanks for doing that, golden boy. <laughs> My pleasure. This is the I've uh, I've scooped the entire journalistic scooped. industry. This is the interview everyone wanted. Yeah, and you got it right here in politics, Joe. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone for listening. We'll have a more normal episode next week where um, we can talk about hating nonsense and stuff. Quite right. Bye bye.